Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis. And as always, I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. In today's part 21, we will talk about reordering series. Therefore, first we should talk about what this exactly means. If we don't have a series but a finite sum, you know this is a short notation for the sum a1 plus a2 plus a3 until we reach a n. Of course, we also could calculate a different sum where we start with a2. And then we add a1. So you see, I just want to flip the members around. And then we continue with this until we reach the end of the sum. And for convenience, let's assume that n is even, such that the end looks like this. Now, since you know all the calculation rules, you immediately know this is the same sum. We don't change the result of the sum when we just reorder the terms. However, you already know an infinite sum, a series, is different from a finite sum. There, a reordering can indeed change the value. In order to see this, let's immediately look at an example. So let's take this well-known series where we add plus and minus 1. There we have already shown that it is not convergent. However, we can show that the sequence of partial sums has two different accumulation values. And in this case, they are 0 and 1. This is indeed easy to see because we start with 1, then we add minus 1, so we are at 0, then at 1 again, then at 0 again, so we alternate between both values here. Now what we will do is we will reorder the series and we will get different accumulation values. We simply start with 1 again, but then I want to exchange these terms here. Okay, so what we get is simply this new series here. The first thing you see immediately is that with the reordering, the series is still not convergent. However, we still find two different accumulation values. But now it's 1 and 2 as the accumulation values. So the first lesson we've learned here is always be careful when you reorder an infinite series. Indeed, such changes we have seen here can also happen when we look at a convergence series. Therefore, let's consider this example here, where we already know it's convergent by the Leibniz criterion. The test here is applicable because we have an alternating series and also here a monotonically decreasing part. You already know the series is given by a positive fraction, then comes a negative fraction, then comes a positive fraction again, then a negative again, and so on. And here we know we have a unique limit, so we have just one accumulation value. Therefore the question here is, how can we reorder the whole thing such that we change the limit? And I can already tell you, this is indeed possible for this example. What we will do is that we take two positive numbers before the next negative number comes. Hence first we add 1 over 1 plus 1 third and then we subtract 1 half. Then in the next step we have to take these two positive numbers and then we subtract 1 quarter. And with this rule we just continue. Of course the important thing you should note here is that we don't miss any numbers involved here and we also don't add other ones. For this reason, we call this a reordering of this series. Of course, don't worry, I give you the exact mathematical definition of a reordering soon. At the moment, for us, it's enough to know that this series here is convergent with a limit c greater than 0. In fact, later we will see that this constant c is the natural logarithm of 2. However, also not so important right now. Because here you just have to do some suitable calculations with the two series and we get out that this series is also convergent. But the result, the limit, is 3 halves times c. So strictly greater than the limit we had before. Therefore the important result for you is here, we have a convergent series, we reorder it and we get another limit out. The whole calculation for this is a nice exercise but I don't discuss it now because I want to focus on the result that this strange thing here cannot happen for an absolutely convergent series. Therefore, for such a series, it's always allowed to reorder the whole series without changing the limit. But before we do this, let's finally fix the definition of a reordering. 
For this, let's take a series and a map tau. That goes from the natural numbers into the natural numbers and is bijective. Of course, if you have another index set for the series, you would change the natural numbers here into this index set. The visualization for this map tau is that it is our reordering, where we have the old indices on the right hand side and the new indices on the left hand side. For example, the new index 1 could correspond to the old index 3. In the same way, we have similar relations for the other indices. However, the only important thing here is that we have a one-to-one -one correspondence between the old and the new indices. And this is exactly given by the term bijective. Now you might already guess, the new series where we put in tau k as the index is called a reordering of the original series. So we have the same terms involved, but possibly in a different order. And this simply works by shuffling the natural numbers with the help of a bijective map tau. Okay, by having this, let's formulate the theorem for this video today. As promised, it's about absolutely convergent series. If we have such a series, then we know that any reordering is also absolutely convergent. And more importantly, the values, the limits, are the same. In other words, such a strange thing as before can't happen here. And indeed, this nice result holds for any reordering. Okay, now I think we are able to prove such a statement. Therefore, this is what we do for the rest of the video. Now, first please recall that being absolutely convergent means that the series here is still convergent when you put the absolute value bars around a k. And for this convergent series, I want to use the Cauchy criterion. This means that for a given epsilon greater than zero, the Cauchy criterion implies there exists a capital N, which we call N1 for the moment, such that for all indices n, m afterwards, we have that this finite sum here is less than epsilon. Using this, we can show on the one hand that this series is also absolutely convergent and on the other hand that this equation holds. Both proofs work similarly, therefore I just show you that the limits coincide. Because I think that is just more interesting. More concretely, this means we want to show that the distance from the limit to the partial sums, where we have tau k here, is less than epsilon. Maybe it's a good idea to use an abbreviation here, let's call this limit capital A. So in the next step I want to bring in an expression we can control and then I want to use the triangle inequality. And the term we use is the finite sum of a k where we start with 1 and go to n1 minus 1. We do this because we already know by the Cauchy criterion that this term is already close to a. Okay, then the triangle inequality makes this less or equal than two terms. Okay, I've told you before, for the first term we already know it's less than epsilon by the Cauchy criterion. More concretely, we see that the difference here gives us this infinite sum. And if you write the limit in front, you can see here we can use the triangle inequality again. Therefore, in fact, for this term we already know it's less than epsilon no matter how large n is. Hence, in summary, the first term here is no problem at all. However, for the second term we have to work a little bit, because here tau is involved. Okay, we need some space, therefore let's call this part just star. In order to deal with this, we have to define a suitable capital N. Why that? There, the picture for tau might help again. So you should see here, in the second sum, we go through all the tau k, where k goes from 1 to an arbitrary n. However, in the first sum, we always stop at the index n1-1. Hence, it would be nice if we would subtract all the terms here with the second sum. But this means with the tau map here, we have to hit all the indices until we reach n1-1. And because the map is bijective, we already know this will eventually happen. Also, it's no problem at all that maybe the 4 is mapped to a number that comes after n1-1. We just continue further until all the points on the right hand side we want are hit. And the last index on the left hand side we need for that to happen, we just call capital N. 
Therefore, for all indices n, which are greater or equal than this capital N, we can consider the set of the images, tau1, tau2, until we reach tau n. And this is always a superset of the set, given by the indices 1, 2, until n1 minus 1. In other words, at least we hit all of these indices on the right hand side. For our part star, this means we completely eliminate this sum here. Therefore, only terms in this sum remain. However, there we have the question, what are the indices that remain? Before answering that, we should immediately simplify the whole expression by using the triangle inequality again. This is indeed simpler because now we just add up non-negative terms. We still don't know the indices here, but now you should see we don't need to know them exactly. Because we already know that this a does not have any index that is less than n1. Hence when we write a j, we know that we start with j is equal to n1. Of course the start index could be larger than n1, but we just want an estimate here. And for this reason we can also put infinity at the end index. Of course this is just a rough estimate for the real number, but we already know this part here is less than epsilon. And obviously we don't need more than that. Because now we have both terms here less than epsilon. Hence the whole sum is less than 2 epsilon. And as usual we can call this 2 times epsilon, epsilon prime. Therefore in summary this whole calculation shows the convergence property. This means that for all epsilon prime greater than zero, we find a capital N such that for all indices afterwards, this difference is less than epsilon prime. So here we have the limit for this sequence of partial sums. And this is what we wanted to show. The reordering has the same limit as the series before. Okay, so this closes our proof. Okay, and then in the next video, I show you how we can immediately apply this nice fact. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.